Hello guys and welcome back to my channel interview with Bunny and from today we will start a completely brand new playlist and that is on the graph data structure where we will try to cover almost everything that you need to know to solve any problem during the technical interview. First we will try to understand that what are the different types of graphs are there, how they are represented in our computer and how we can solve this problem using different techniques. So step by step we will understand everything that you need to know to solve a problem and believe me after completing this entire playlist on graph you can solve any problem during your technical interview. So without wasting much time let's get started. So before jumping into the lead code problems or any problem of the technical interview first we have to understand that how we should represent a graph in our computer. I assume that you have no prior knowledge of graph and this is for the first time you are coming to a lecture to understand graph. So we will start from the very basic that how we should represent a graph in our computer and we will proceed from there. So let's first understand how a graph actually looks like. So if you just see the pictorial representation of a graph, so a graph actually looks something like this where you can see there are some circles with some lines connected with it. So this circle are nothing but a node or the vertex of a graph. So we normally call this as node or we call this as a vertex. And the black line which you can see over here which connects between the two nodes is called as edge. So here this is called as edge and these are called as nodes. So normally we represent a node by n or v or we represent an edge by the capital E. Now the next point you have to remember is all these nodes are represented by a number. Means for example this is number 1, this is number 2, this is 3, 4 or 5. So it is not required that all this number should be sequential or it should be in a particular order. A graph can be represented by any arbitrary order with any arbitrary number. So, so far we have learned this is called the node of a graph, this is the edge of a graph and a node can be represented by a simple number. Now if you look carefully there is a small difference between this diagram 1 and this diagram 2 and that is this graph have some edges with some arrow mark over here but in this one there is no arrow between vertex 3 and 4 or any of the vertex. So let's first understand that why this graph is represent without an arrow mark and why this graph has an arrow mark from one node to another. So if you understand in a real life scenario think of like this this is point 1 this is point 2 and there is a single way of traversing from 1 to 2 but you cannot go back from 2 to 1. So this is a unidirectional one. So you have the only route from 1 to 2 but the reverse is not possible and that is why it is given with an arrow mark means only one can traverse to 2 but not the opposite is possible. Similarly over here if you see from 3 to 4 you can traverse but from 4 to 3 you cannot traverse. So this is how you represent a graph where there is a direction associated with it and you represent a direction that from point 1 you can only travel to point 2 but you cannot do the reverse. So to identify a direction we use an arrow mark over here and that is why this second graph is known as a directed graph. Means we are giving a direction to each and every edges that from node 1 you can traverse to node 2. So this graph is known as the directed graph and similarly since this graph doesn't have any arrow associated with it means there is no direction there so it is known as 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 undirected graph means from one you can travel to two similarly from two you can also travel to one so it's like a duplex connection where you can traverse from one point to two and from point two to point one so what we have learned we have learned what is a node what is an edge what is a directed graph and what is an undirected graph. Now let's go a bit deep into this thing. Let's understand one more concept that is a cyclic and a non-cyclic graph. So here in the first graph if you see carefully all these nodes are connected in a cycle means from 1 you can traverse to 2, you can traverse to 4, you can traverse to 3 and again you can come back to 1. Similarly you can do the reverse means from 1 you can come to 3 
from 3 to 4, 4 to 2 and 2 to 1. So here you can see there is a cycle by which you can traverse a different nodes of the graph. And that's why if a graph have a cycle within it, it is called as a cyclic graph. And since this is an undirected graph, this is called as undirect cyclic graph. So what we will call, we will call it is as an undirected cyclic graph. Similarly, for the directed graph, if you see, we have a direction associated from 1 to 2, but no direction is there for 2 to 4. Similarly, there is no direction from 4 to 3 and so on. So, we cannot create a complete cycle over here. So, this cannot be a cyclic graph. But if we just change this graph a bit and if we add few more edges to this graph, means if we just add one more edge from 2 to 4, and one more edge from 4 to 3 and one more from 4 to 1. You can see we have created a cycle within this graph and hence it will be called as a cyclic graph. And since it's a directed graph, so it is a directed acyclic graph. I think this is clear that what is a cyclic graph and what is uncyclic or a cyclic graph. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is like here, though this looks like a simple example of a graph where only a one edge is associated from one to two, but it is not necessary that there should be a single edges between one to two. There can be a multiple edges that are present from one to two. For example, if there is a path between two to one, you can represent it like this means you can go from 1 to 2 similarly you can go from 2 to 1 also there can be a self loop means from node 1 you can come back to node 1 again so this is a self loop which we represent like this so a directed graph can have more than one edge between two nodes but here you can see for the undirected graph there is only one node because you have defined that you can go to and fro so obviously you do not need another edge to represent the same direction so now what we have learned we have learned that what is a directed graph what is an undirected graph what is a cyclic and what is an acyclic graph and one thing to mention if a graph if a directed graph does not have a cycle it is called as directed acyclic graph which is more commonly represented as dag means directed acyclic graph so let's understand few more concepts on graph and then we will proceed further so the next thing that you have to know is what is a path of a graph so for example you have a graph something like this so as the name suggests, the path of a graph means there should be an edge between the two nodes and all the nodes should be reachable. Let me tell you clearly what I actually mean to say. So here if you see, 1, 2, 3, 4 is a, is a path of a graph. Similarly, 1, 2, 3, 5 is another path of a graph. Because from 1, you can travel to 2, from 2 to 3 and 3 to 5 you can travel so this is one of the path but if i change the sequence of the node means 1 5 3 2 this is not a path of graph because you can see from the node 1 there is no way you can reach to the node 5 in the next order so since there is no connection between 1 to and 1 to 5 so this cannot be a path of a graph so this is not possibly a path. So if you got the concept, all the nodes that you are representing over here should be connected sequentially. So 4, 3, 2, 1, this is a path, but not 1, 4, 3, 2, because there is no path associated between 1 and 4. So I hope this is clear. Now we are almost at the end of the theory of graph. Now the last and the final concept that you have to understand is the degree of a graph. So what is the degree? It is a very simple concept. The degree of a graph means the number of edges that are coming inside or outside from a particular node. So here, if you look carefully, for this node, you have two edges, one here and one here. So the degree of this node, which we represent as D of one is two. Similarly, for this node three, the degree of three is one, 2 and 3. So the degree of this node is 3. One point to note it's a specific formula just for the namesake. Remember this for an undirected graph, the total summation of the degree is equal to twice the edge present in the graph. Means the summation of the degree is equal to 2 into E. Remember this formula. 
So if you look carefully, the degree of this node 1 is 2, the degree of this 3 is 3, the degree of this 5 is 2, the degree of 4 is 3, the degree of this 2 is again 2. So the total summation of the degree means 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 3, 7, 7 plus 2, 9, 9 plus 3, 12. So the total summation value of this degree is 12. And if you see the number of edges connected over here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, which is nothing but 2 into 6. So remember this formula that the summation value of the degree of a graph for an undirected graph is twice number of edges present over there. But this calculation doesn't hold true for a directed graph. And the way we represent the degree of a directed graph is also a bit different. So let's see how we represent. So for example, we have a directed graph, something like this. So while defining a degree of a directed graph, we represent by two units. One is the in degree and what is the out degree. So as the name suggests, the in degree means the total number of edges that are coming towards the node. So here, if you see, the total number of in degree of this node is 1 because this is the only one edge that is coming inside the node. So the in degree of this node is 1. Similarly, the out degree of this node is also 1. Now let's take the example of this node 3. Here if you see the in degree is 1 but the out degree is 2 since there are two nodes that are going outside the node 3. So the out degree will be 2. So in this way, we represent the in degree and the out degree of a directed graph. So hopefully you are clear with the few of the terminologies of the graph that what is an edge, what is a node, what is a cyclic, what is a acyclic, what is a path of a graph and so on. So I have covered more or less all the concept or the terminologies that you need to know before trying to solve any problem of a graph. So keeping in mind all the terminologies that we have learned just now, we will proceed further to the next video where we will try to understand that how this entire picture of a graph is represented in the memory map of a computer. But before moving forward, if you like this video and found this video useful, do not forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So see you on our next video where we will understand that how we should represent a graph in our memory map and how we should solve our problem. So see you in the next video. Thank you.